Air Force One lands in Senegal, and U.S. President Barack Obama begins his eight-day trip to Africa, aimed at strengthening business opportunities and promoting democracy. Um, Taoiseach, I think it's important to take this opportunity to bring a bit of balance into the discussions around the visit of the U.S. President and his wife, given the almost unprecedented slobbering over them that the nation has been exposed to over the last number of days. And it's really hard to know which is worse, whether it's the outpourings of the Obamas themselves or the sycophantic fawning over them by sections of the media and the political establishment. We've had separate and special news bulletins by the state broadcaster to tell us what Michelle Obama and her daughters had for lunch in Dublin, but very little questioning of the fact that she was having lunch with Mr. Tax Exile himself. Uh, we had very little challenging of the fact that she's glad to be home, home a country that she's been in less than a week and that her husband has very tenuous links in. And of course, the biggest irony of all, the protestations of Obama himself in his speech to the children in Northern Ireland about peace. When he said, those who choose a path of peace, I promise you that the United States of America will support you every step of the way. We will be the wind at your back. Now I ask you, is this person going for the hypocrite of the century award? Because we have to call things by their right names. And the reality is that by any serious examination, this man is a war criminal. He has just announced his decision to supply arms to the Syrian opposition, including the jihadists, fueling the destabilization of that region and continuing to undermine secularism and knock back conditions for women. This is the man who is in essence stalling the Geneva peace talks by trying to broker enhanced leverage for the Syrian opposition by giving them arms and to hell with the thousands more who lose their lives or the tens of thousands more who will be displaced as this war goes on. This is the man who has facilitated a 200% increase in the use of drones which have killed thousands of people including hundreds of children. And you Taoiseach, you are the one who's turned a blind eye on these activities. You've talked about the G8 being an opportunity to showcase Ireland. But is it not a reality that you have showcased us as a nation of pimps prostituting ourselves in return for a pat on the head? To be honest with you, we were really speculating this morning whether you were going to deck the cabinet out in leprechaun hats decorated with a bit of stars and stripes to really mark abject humiliation here. So my question to you, Taoiseach, is as follows. What steps are you going to take to follow in the correct statements and the correct decision of your colleague Tanishta Eamon Gilmore, who voted against the lifting of the arms embargo in relation to Syria? What steps are you going to take to ensure that no weapons for Syria are going to go through Shannon in breach of our international laws Thank on you, neutrality? Deputy. What steps are you going to take to showcase this country, not as a lapdog of US imperialism, but as an independent nation with an independent foreign policy, which takes a lead in international Deputy. diplomacy to outlaw the use of drones, the favourite method of extermination of your friend, Mr Obama. Thanks, Kian Corla. Of course, I said nothing about the Northern Ireland peace process, a process which everybody supports, but is not one that gives you a licence to do whatever you like anywhere else around the globe. Barely mentioned in the context of Obama's trip is also quietly returning to the continent. Back in February, Obama told Congress that the Pentagon had deployed drones and 100 troops to operate them to Niger so they could be flown over Mali and share information with France. There isn't much peace in Iraq where 26 people lost their lives yesterday. There isn't much peace in Afghanistan. There isn't much peace in Pakistan. And there certainly isn't much peace in Syria. And the side I'm on in Syria is the one, and I, what I agree with, is the statement by Oxfam, where Oxfam said, sending arms to the Syrian opposition won't create a level playing field. Instead, it further risks fueling an arms free-for-all, where the victims are the civilians of Syria 
Our experience tells us that the crisis will only drag on for longer if arms are poured in. And that's in essence what the Americans have done here. I can only take from your non-answer to the question that you were asked is that you're going to take no steps to ensure that those arms will not be sent through Shannon in breach of our neutrality. You said here last week no arms ever came through Shannon. How do you know that, seeing as no investigations take place? The reality is in 2012, 548 US planes landed in Shannon. How do you know what was on them if you haven't examined them? Your Minister for Transport revealed uh, in a parliamentary question that 239 civilian planes landed in Shannon where they sought permission because they were carrying munici munitions of war or dangerous goods on a civilian aircraft. What steps are you going to take to intervene in this situation? And the last point I'll make is that People in this country are very fond of our American brothers and sisters, and I think we stand far more shoulder to shoulder with them by making valid criticisms of their president, who has broken his election promises, rather than just pimping this nation as a tax haven for their corporations. I'm sure the Americans would far prefer if their multinationals paid their taxes at home rather than offshore here so they could develop their health care, so they wouldn't be wasting money on arms being sent to slaughter people in other countries.